time to revisit one of the best old school properties in GTA Online, where easy money abounds. Fuel investment brokers, special parties, and endless gaming sessions with one of GTA 5's best ways to make money. Hi, my name's Dan, and I'm an old grumpy gamer. The uh, white powder production plant in GTA Online is a brilliant business that's recently undergone some solid improvements over the last few DLCs. So first up, the economics, with the Alamo C being the cheapest at 975,000 or 2,870 grand with the upgrades. Looking at a single resupply, which will set you back 75,000, or you can do a mission if you're short, but a single resupply will gross you a tidy $220,160 and take about two hours to complete. If you want to fill the lock up to capacity, it will take two and a half resupplies and bring in 504,000 per run. Assuming you've purchased your supplies, that works out to a net profit of about 72.5 per hour, giving you a break even of 39 and a half hours. Now, while we're on profitability and before we move on to actually running your biker business, there's one additional thing to consider your nightclub. If you own a nightclub and you've upgraded the warehouse in the basement, you may have noticed a whole bunch of products your staff can source there. The nightclub warehouse goods are tied to other businesses in the game. And in this case, owning the powder lockup unlocks the South American imports. To purchase your business, head to your MC clubhouse, find the office, which is normally tucked away in a corner somewhere, look for an icon of a laptop on your minimap, sit down at the computer, log in, buy business, and you'll be presented presented with a list of businesses, and there's a filter on the left if it's a bit cluttered. Select the one you're after, remembering the cheapest option is absolutely okay, but if you can get one to the north of the city, that's even better. Click the business you've decided on, then buy now and any other confirmations. Head out of the building, set a marker, and head over. The first time you walk into the business, you'll get a quick, one-time, silent briefing. Remember, the MC businesses were set up before Rockstar did elaborate storylines for their DLCs, so Pay attention here, it's important. After the briefing, head to the laptop. There's an icon to show you where that's at. Controls are top left, log in, then click setup, top left. Confirm, and you'll be immediately booted from the facility and LJT will give you a bell. After Lester's finished banging on, there will be a new marker in the map for what is typically a pretty basic fetch quest. Head over, find the supplies and collect them, head back. And another quick silent briefing, so pay attention. And that's it. Next up, upgrades. Head back to the laptop, log in, upgrades, pick the first one, confirm, get booted from the PC while the business is being upgraded, take a quick look around at the upgrades if you're keen, then rinse and repeat for the other two. Okay, with that done, you now have a full set of supplies and staff incoming. Time to walk away for a while, and how long you walk away for depends on the business. Again, a single round of supplies for the powder lockup takes two hours to produce and will gross you a tidy 220 grand. Blue Crystals takes two and a half hours to produce and will net you 178.5. The Paper Factory and Laundry takes two hours and 40 minutes to produce and will bring in 176.4. The Wacky Green Stuff takes three hours and 20 minutes to produce, which will net you 189 grand. And the Travel Documents will take around two and a half hours to convert and will fetch you 126 grand. But what happens when you run out of supplies? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, if you're not on it pretty quickly, LJT will give you a bell and let you know so you can relax there but ultimately you'll need to resupply the business and we have two options three if you include the stash houses but two really the easy and most efficient way especially if you have multiple businesses is to simply purchase supplies this will cost 75,000 but will save you about 40 minutes to an hour if you're running multiple businesses or you own an agency or a Kasatka the money you make in that 40 minutes far outweighs the out-of-pocket expense. To purchase these supplies, either head to the business itself and log into the laptop or to the arcade and the master control center if you own one. Once you've logged in, click resupply buy supplies, and any confirmations. Now, a couple of quick notes here. If you resupply early, that is before the supplies have run out, the supplies may be a bit cheaper, so you don't need to wait until the business is completely empty to resupply. Option two for supplies is to steal them. 
Now there is a massive issue with doing this. Sure, it saves you a bit of coin, but stealing supplies only nets you 20% of what purchasing them does. So that means you need to do five individual supply runs for a full resupply of your business. Each run takes between eight and 12 minutes. So that's 40 minutes to an hour of grinding. Unless you are literally flat broke, you are way better off purchasing supplies. Anyway, if you're super keen to persist down this road, same as before, head to the business itself and log into the laptop or to the arcade and the master control center. Resupply, steel supplies, booted, quick call from Lester, uh, I'm sorry, I mean Long John D-Bag, and a new marker will appear. Now there's about a dozen different resupply missions. Some will need you to literally steal supplies from rivals, others will need you to liberate some stuff from lockups, and some will require you to intercept a delivery drop. Regardless, they're pretty straightforward. Just make sure you have full weapons, armor and ammo before going in so you're not caught on the hop. And you can stop at ammunition on your way to the drop if you're a little under-equipped. Also, if you're brave enough to do these in a public lobby, other players will be incentivized to steal or destroy your supplies. So I recommend doing this in an invite-only lobby instead, unless you're looking to get properly griefed. One other option that's recently been added is the stash houses. These are great because they're a super quick and easy way to resupply, but they can be a bit hit and miss because you only get one opportunity per real world day and the resupply itself is random. But anyway, if you head down this route, head to anywhere in the open, open your map, look for a little purple house, set a marker and head over. Down the stairs and take out the five guards and there are always five guards. Find the yellow post-it and note the safe combo over to the safe and unlock them, then back up the stairs and get the heck out of Dodge. Once you clear one of your businesses, we'll get a full resupply. That's the full 75 gram worth, but you won't know which one until it's randomly selected at the end of the mission. You'll also get 30 grand in your back pocket, which is a nice little bonus. So if you're going to do this, I'd suggest maybe doing it at the start of a long session so you can skip at least one resupply and then get on to the rest of your business. Okay, it's been a minute, you've racked up some product and you're ready to sell. Oh, and while we're on sell missions, some YouTubers will use the term sell your business regularly and that confused the crap out of me. You don't actually sell your business, what they mean is you sell your stock inside your business or your warehouse, you still keep the building. Anyway, head to the business and over to the laptop and you always want to do this from the business rather than from the master control center. Starting these from the arcade can cost you valuable time, so from the business itself. Now before we get started on the missions themselves, when you walk in you'll see a product bar and that is a good indicator of how many vehicles you're going to get. If your product bar is less than one third full, you'll get a single vehicle, probably five stops, but a single vehicle, which makes a delivery quick, easy and solo friendly. Between one third and two third full means two vehicles. Doable solo in an invite only lobby, but you're going to want a fast way to get back between drop offs, either a really quick bike or a helicopter. This one is much easier with a friend. Once you clock over two thirds full, it becomes a three vehicle mission with likely 15 stops. I've done this a couple of times solo, but it's a massive pain in the backside and you may well run out of time before your deliveries are finished. So if you're looking at more than a two third full product bar, you're going to need at least one mate to help you out, two if possible. So head back to the business premises and wander over to the PC. Log in and click sell stock. You'll then be presented with two sell options, a quicker, cheaper mission or a longer mission that will get you a better price. And we always want to go for that higher amount. Click the higher amount, click the confirm button next, and you'll be booted back into the public lobby. And after a moment, you'll get another call from LJT. Lester will brief you on one of a half a dozen different sell missions. Simply follow the instructions to drop off the goods, avoiding any griefers, and you're good. Most of the missions are reasonable, but the post-op van is mind numbingly slow and boring. As soon as that last package is dropped, the money will be deposited in your account and you can continue putting around in free mode. Now, if you're 
were silly. I mean, brave, brave enough to do this in a public lobby, which will net you a 2% high demand sell bonus for every player in the lobby. Although I believe that's now capped at 18 players or 36% as of the Mercs DLC. But anyway, if you do this in a public lobby, players will be incentivized to destroy your shipment. If that happens, the moment your shipment is destroyed, change lobbies or exit the game. If you're quick enough, the game won't register your product as being destroyed. When you either boot back up or land in the next lobby, most of your product will still be intact. I think you might lose one package this way, but most of it will still be intact. If you get the post-op mission, you can also do this trick to try and get something a little less tedious at the cost of a little bit of stock, so probably worth it. Right, one last thing to touch on with the MC businesses is raids. Every four active hours or so, there's a chance the cops will raid one of your businesses. If they do, the cops will destroy any product that you have in the business, destroy any supplies that you have, and arrest all of your staff. You'll get an on-screen notification when the raid starts. If it's left unchecked or unchallenged, like say if you're AFK, this means the business will lose everything and you'll need to do another setup mission to get rolling again. If you catch it early, that is while the cops are still at the business premises, you can head over and kill all of the raiders and your business will remain completely intact. This is absolutely the ideal scenario. Miss the notification or take your time with it and the cops will make off with your staff and product, in which case you'll need to chase them down and liberate whatever they have, then return to the business with whatever you can. Now from what I've been able to ascertain, the raids themselves will only happen if you've been in the game for at least a few hours and you're registered as some kind of boss and you're in the open world, and you're not participating in an open world mission. Raids have never happened to me when I'm in an unrelated building, like my arcade or executive office, and I've never had one while doing a prep mission for Kyo, Dre, or anything like that. Raids will never happen if you're in a contact mission or race either. So I've found the way to minimize the impact is to take a break, like literally shut the game down and take a break every few hours, which honestly is probably a good idea anyway. Limit boss time. So only stay registered as an MC club president for the absolute minimum time, like when you're checking on progress of production, supplies, etc. Retire the moment a cell mission or supply mission is complete too. Be mindful of your location. If you're on a longer session, only register as a club president when you're physically in one of your businesses and retire before leaving it if you can. And limit AFK. Only AFK for a few hours at a time. If you want to AFK for a long time, you may need to shut down the game after a few hours, then reboot it to reset the timer. None of these are guaranteed, of course, but I found them helpful in minimizing raids and therefore stock loss and wasted time. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you in the next video.